One question I receive a lot has to do with the size of the cups I use, specifically on aluminum. Well, there's the answer right there. A number five cup is all I use for all of my aluminum. Now, the reason why is a little bit more scientific and worth checking out this episode. Now, everything that I'm using in this episode can be found on WeldMetalsOnline.com. WeldMetalsOnline is the number one source for trusted practice materials, consumables, filler materials, gloves, welding machines, and more. WeldMetalsOnline only sells high-quality tested products from brands that you can trust not to be a problem as you learn or as you continue your profession. Now, if you use my personal code TFS10 at checkout, you'll save on your order and keep these vids pumping out to you for no charge or subscription service. Now, if you ask most professional welders which cup they prefer on aluminum, you'll probably hear one of two answers. It's either going to be the number five standard or the number eight with gas lens. Now, of course, either one of those will work and anything in between is also sufficient. But let's take a look at why the number five standard is the most common. Now, on your left is the number five standard, pumping at about 12 CFH. On your right is the number eight gas lens, pumping at about 20 CFH. Now both setups are on the same machine using the exact same settings and the exact same technique and the exact same tungsten. Absolutely nothing changed between these two runs except for the amount of argon coverage. Now can you spot the difference between these two welds? There's three very distinct features that we are looking at. You give up, here they are. The etching zone, the width of the bead, and the sharpness of the bead. But how can two cups using the exact same settings make two very different welds? Well, the answer to that has to do with the nature of aluminum itself. Now, aluminum is a metal that we often consider to be non-reactive. Now, materials like steel, stainless, titanium, and a few others are reactive, meaning they will begin to oxidize at specific temperatures when exposed to the atmospheric gases, or the air that you and I breathe in every single day. Aluminum has its own oxide layer present in the atmosphere. In other words, you can pretty much keep molten aluminum out in the atmosphere all day long and the oxide layer won't do anything except for stay present as it protects the core layer. You can actually see the oxide layer present when pouring molten aluminum into a mold, for example. Notice how the aluminum kind of looks frozen on the outside, but the mold still fills up? That's the oxide layer forming basically a tube for the core layer to flow through. It's actually what makes aluminum such a tricky and unique metal to weld because that always present oxide layer has a melting point that is higher than the core metal that it protects. Now, all of this probably sounds super boring and completely irrelevant, but stick with me here, I got gotcha. you. Aluminum is traditionally welded using alternating current, or AC. We use AC because the positive side of the wave gets hot enough to blast the oxide layer away before switching to the negative side and penetrating down into the core layer. The reason why we use argon as a shielding gas is to prevent the oxide layer from forming again as we create a bead. And we also use it to, so we can strike an arc without the shielding gas blowing the tungsten up and melting the cup down. But either way, the science in this case is why most professional welders tend to use less argon in a tighter shielding envelope, such as with the standard number five. Now, anywhere the argon touches is an area where the arc can strike. Now, on the positive stroke, or the cleaning cycle of the AC wave, the entire surface here is electrified and is trying to blast its way up into a single point, which is the tungsten. Now, I try to think of this like playing a game of darts. You only play backwards. Try throwing a dartboard at the dart and see how accurate you are. Basically, that's a lot of random energy trying to fire into a single point with any degree of accuracy or repeatability. I missed it. Now, on the opposite side of that is the negative stroke, which you can pretty much fire wherever you point it and it's always gonna land there. I meant to throw it there. So in short, the larger the cup you have, the more random it becomes because the area of the arc and strike becomes a much greater area as opposed to a smaller cup, which is a more narrow and more controlled area. Now here's a shot from both weld tests. The bigger cup is striking all over the place while the smaller cup with less argon is striking less. 
The smaller area results in a more controllable weld pool, less of an etching zone, a tighter bead, and a sharper overall appearance. That's why if you jack up the flow rate and slap on a larger cup after laying down a crappy weld, it only gets worse. That's also why we don't recommend anything larger than a number 8 gas lens cup on aluminum. It literally won't do you any good. One more thing worth mentioning is tight spaces. Now a number 8 gas lens is a pretty large cup, which may hinder your vision on a weld pool in a tight corner. Now of course the solution is to increase the stick out a little bit on larger cups, but that actually increases the size of the gas envelope, which brings us right back into the same issues that we've been talking about this entire time. A smaller number 5 standard cup is much better at getting into those tight spaces without obstruction. Now you might just be thinking, Justin, who cares how big the etching zone and the bead profile is if it does the exact same thing? Well, good question. Here's a couple of examples. My industry is automotive performance fabrication. Now, mirrored finished aluminum intercooler piping, for instance, is often left unpolished at the weld bead for a more raw and fabricated appearance. Now, a giant random etching zone tends to look a little bit less professional, or kind of like somebody just threw some junk together to create a missile, no matter how nice the bead profile looks. It just doesn't look right. Now, large containers like fuel cells that contain long outside corner joints look a lot nicer when the etching zone isn't blowing all over creation. But I will also throw out there that there are some welders that prefer to run a more fat stack on their metal. A number 8 gas lens usually makes a larger and hotter weld pool because there's more argon present, which usually they just melt it down and stuff a whole bunch of filler in an excessive mounts to achieve this nice stacked look. And it usually takes about two to three times as long to weld. And I'll be honest here, it's not my style. I'm not very good at it, but it's kind of an example. In either instance, neither is wrong. It's just style. And the only way to develop your style is to practice, practice, practice. There literally is no substitution for hood time. So head over to weldmetalsonline.com, drop the TFS10 discount code in for some savings and support, and get practicing. I'll see you guys on the next episode.